example as your friend is being faced with a danger. Let's say a dog is about to attack your friend. You know, the first thing the dog will do is to start barking. You understand? So what your friend will do is going to pick up the barking sound of this dog through his, what, his auditory pathways. You understand? So first, let me, let's, let's draw what actually happens in the what, in the normal uh, human body. Let's say this is the cortex. It's an example. Your cortex is not rectangular in shape, my, by the way. So, as your friend picks up the sparking sound through the auditory pathways, it gets to his temporal lobe. Let's use T, his temporal lobe. So from the temporal lobe, the temporal lobe is going to relate the information to the limbic system, guys. To the limbic system. Okay, now then, as this information gets to, to, the, what, to the limbic system, your friend is now going to turn and see actually what is actually barking. So when he turns, he's going to see the dog. And then he's going to pick up, he's going to pick up this sensation through his auditory art, his visual pathways. From the visual pathways, information is going to be related to the what? Occipital lobe. When the information gets to the occipital lobe, the, what the occipital lobe does is that it's also related the information further to the what? To the limbic system. So now, the information, is, the limbic system is now bombarded with information from the visual pathways and also from the what? Auditory pathways. You understand? So, but we also have information coming from what the cerebral cortex, maybe due to previous experiences. You understand? Maybe your friend has a uh, has uh, has seen a movie where he must have seen a dog attacking an individual. So the uh, the, uh, the the cerebral cortex is going to relate the same information to the to the limbic system. So now we are getting information from three places: the auditory pathways, the visual pathways, and also what the cerebral cortex relating to the what previous experiences. That's memory, guys. Okay, what happens is that what? The limbic system, on the other hand, is not going to relate the same information that is being bombarded to, to the what? To the hypothalamus, because the hypothalamus is the control center of the autonomic nervous system. But in the hypothalamus, we have what? The, uh, the anterior medial nucleus, which, which relates basically with the parasympathetic. And also, we have what? The posterior medial nucleus, which relates basically with the sympathetic. But under normal condition, these two uh, sides of the hypothalamus they are in equilibrium. So the information from what the limbic system is going to come and disturb this equilibrium that exists. You understand? So what actually happens is that what the, the information from the limbic system is going to stimulate the posterior lateral nucleus of the hypothalamus, while simultaneously it's going to inhibit the what the anterior medial nucleus of the hypothalamus, guys. So when that happens, there's going to be a shift in the normal equilibrium. For example, favoring what the what sympathetic aspect of what the autonomic nervous system. You understand? So what actually happens is that what when the posterior lateral uh, nucleus of the hypothalamus is overstimulated, the information gets down from the CNS through what is called a poly a poly neuronal descending what pathways. So now this poly neuronal descending pathways, there are a network of neurons guys that descend from what? The posterior what? Uh, the posterior lateral nucleus of the hypothalamus. What they do is that what they transcend to the spinal cord, you understand? And in the spinal cord, they go to the segment of the spinal cord that relate to the sympathetic nervous system. Where are we talking about here guys? We are talking about from what? T1 to what? L2. Sometimes it could be what? L3. Depending on what anatomical variation, guys. So now, what actually happens there? From this point in time, the information which is being uh, which, which 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 comes from what the, this poly, this which which comes from the posterior lateral nucleus through the poly neural descending pathways gets to this segment of the spinal cord, T1, L2, or L3. So now this information is going to what goes it's gonna go out from what the spinal cord that's from the CNS through what we call the sympathetic outflow. You understand? Now this sympathetic outflow we're talking about what this preganglionic paras preganglionic what sympathetic fibers guys. You understand? And this preganglionic sympathetic fibers, or we can call them the sympathetic outflow, sympathetic outflow. They are actually what they are axons. They are axons of what the 
the neurons which are found in the lateral horn of the spinal cord. You understand? There are cell bodies lies in the lateral horn of the spinal cord. So this now these axons they now travel to the, what, to the sympathetic ganglion, guys. So from the from the uh, from the information coming from the polyneuronal descending pathway hit the cell bodies, you understand, in the lateral horn. You understand? So this information is now related to through what the preganglionic fibers, you understand? So when it gets to the what to the sympathetic ganglion, you understand, from there this the the preganglionic fibers, they are what they release acetylcholine and they stimulate what the nicotinic receptor which is found in the, what, the sympathetic ganglion. When they stimulate the nicotinic receptors found in the sympathetic, sympathetic ganglion, the information is now further related to the, what, to the uh, effector side toward the post Symp the post ganglionic what sympathetic fibers guys you understand when it, when this information is related to the post ganglionic sympathetic fibers now at the terminal point of the post ganglionic sympathetic fibers that is where what the main action takes place guys that's where the main thing lies because it is at the terminal point of the sympathetic uh, 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 fibers these post ganglionic sympathetic fibers that we have what the release of what the neurotransmitters and when we're talking about the sympathetic nervous system, which neurotransmitter are we talking about here? We're talking about the no epinephrine. But mind you, these pretty ganglionic fibers, they can also go to the, to the adrenal gland. You understand? When they go to the adrenal gland, they stimulate what? They, they, the cells which are found in the adrenal gland. And when they stimulate the cells which are found in the adrenal gland, what does the adrenal gland do? The adrenal gland now releases epinephrine into what the systemic circulation you understand in which the epinephrine finds its way to this word particular word uh adrenergic word receptors and it stimulates them and to, to bring about what the corresponding word responses you understand so what actually happened is that what at the nerve terminal that is where the the, the, the synthesis of what the no epinephrine takes place because no epinephrine is being synthesized in the, in the nerve terminals guys so what actually happened? How does no epinephrine get synthesized, guys? We know that what no epinephrine is synthesized from what an amino acid called tyrosine, guys. Tyrosine. We have tyrosine. Eventually, in the nerve terminal of this particular sympathetic uh, fibers, we have special tyrosine pumps. You understand? They are specialized in what taking tyrosine from what the circulation system is from the blood from the blood so what happened is that when tyrosine gets into the axoplasm guys you understand well when you get into the, the cytoplasm of the, the nerve terminals it meets an enzyme called what tyrosine what hydroxylase now this tyrosine hydroxylase convert tyrosine into what dopa you understand so now this this particular dopa now gets converted to what dopamine by what dopa decarboxylase guys you understand so now in the same axoplasm there are space that are called uh, spatial pump in the uh, in the vesicles which are found in the what uh, in the terminal part of the uh, of the neurons so those vesicles they have spatial uh, uh, transport uh, pumps that transport dopamine into what the vesicles so inside the, uh, the vesicles are found in the terminal part of the neurons dopamine gets converted into more epinephrine by an enzyme known as what called what dopamine beta what uh, hydroxylase dopamine beta hydroxylase this particular enzyme brings about the addition of a hydroxy group on the beta carbon found on what on the, uh, the structure of the dopamine guys so it's after uh, after the conversion of this particular uh, dopamine into your new epinephrine, now you agree with me that what uh, more dopamine is being transported into the vesicles. You understand? And as a result of that, you understand, there will be a buildup of dopamine inside the, the vesicles. So, how does the body take care of this particular uh, situation? Because if there is consistent buildup of dopamine, sorry, yeah, uh, new epinephrine inside the vesicles. There is going to be a, a build-up in what uh, uh, osmotic pressure, and once there is a build-up in os osmotic pressure, guys, 
Ah, ah, after a particular certain period of time, there is that tendency that this vesicle can what? Can, 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 it can burst. So inside these vesicles, there are special molecules which are known as what? Chromo. Chromogranin, guys. So now this particular chromogranin, what it does is that it's, it, it, it binds the, 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 the numerous molecules of norepinephrine together so as to lower the, what, the osmotic pressure inside the vesicles. Inside